What is going on you guys? My name is Nick and welcome back to the channel and it's been a little bit you guys. How are you guys doing? I've been doing pretty well myself just a lot of work and a lot of writing in particular But I am back and I'm here to show you guys my complete digital collection Now I have already showed you guys my blu-ray and 4k collection And if you guys want to check out that video the link is of course in the description below But this is my digital collection now there aren't going to be nearly as many titles in this digital collection as there is in my actual physical collection because there's over like probably 1200 uh, discs and DVDs up there but on here it's about 230 I think is how many I have on my voodoo account and I say voodoo specifically because voodoo is really like the main hub for all of my uh, streaming films because on voodoo you can connect a multitude of different accounts you're able to connect your movies anywhere your Google Play your Apple TV all of that stuff so that way everything is set into one central location here on voodoo there are some exceptions because I believe I bought triangle of sadness on Apple TV and it has yet to transfer over to my Voodoo. Now that may be because I believe Triangle of Sadness released one week earlier than it did on Voodoo, so maybe that's like what the glitch is going on because I bought it early on Apple TV, and now that it's officially out on Voodoo, it just doesn't register that I also got it on Voodoo, if that makes sense. I don't know, I'm just trying to make sense of it because I would love to have Triangle of Sadness in my actual collection here, but uh, I gotta jump between services if I wanna do that. But yeah, without further ado, guys, we have some decent amount of titles to get through, and I'm not going to talk about every single one of them. I'm just gonna try to scroll through them and show you guys what I got. But yeah, here we are. We are on my Voodoo. Uh, I have a lot of friends that have my account, so all of these recently watched or continue watching movies are from friends, except for Babylon. Uh, you know, that's, that's me, 100%. I just love giving my Voodoo account out to friends because it just exposes them to more movies. And what is better than that? Before we get into the actual list, I did did separate things into different lists, like I said, for my friends. So if they want a horror film, I do need to update it a little bit. I did this probably a year ago, so I definitely need to come through and re-edit all of this. But that's not what you guys are here for. You guys don't give a crap about that. Uh, also, this at the bottom, uh, these are really, really cool deals. So like Pulp Fiction for $5, Underworld, we won't talk about that. Uh, a Mark Wahlberg bundle, bundle, The Fighter is totally worth it but I don't know about the gambler. But okay, okay, here are my digital collections. Uh, I'm gonna go from A to Z. Sorry if you just got a little bit of my most recent purchases spoiled for you, it's okay. But here we go, I'm going to stop on a few certain films that I think you guys should watch that I'd recommend personally. And that first one is After Sun right here, if you haven't seen that. Charlotte Wells' directorial debut, it is phenomenal. Just a really good movie overall. Uh, let's just start scrolling here. Uh, Babylon, of course, Banshees of Inna Sharon. You got the Batman over there. Big Trouble in Little China. If you haven't seen this, this is just a great, fun 80s action film. Uh, Bodies, Bodies, Bodies is one of my favorite whodunits of the past probably decade. Just the way that they, in the film in particular, it's very unique and I've never seen it done before. Which just makes it worth the watch alone. Bones and all, of course, I love me some Luca Guadagnino, especially when he works with uh, Timothy Chalamet. Just Call Me By Your Name is probably my favorite LGBTQ film. Uh, Citizen Kane, banger. Clockwork Orange, banger. Uh, all, all of these movies are relatively good. I mean, or else I just, I wouldn't own them. Uh, Downton Abbey, the motion picture, though. That is my mom's Blu-ray, and I just redeemed the code. Uh, I'm not that big into Downton Abbey. I've seen a couple episodes of the show. It wasn't bad. It's just, it's not really my thing. The Eternals. I'm gonna click on this one because it deserves more hype. Uh, all of my Marvel people out there, I get it. If y'all don't like this movie, it is very slow. It drags a lot, but that's that's just kind of Chloe Zhao's style. And with a movie where you're trying to set up 10 individual characters and give them all meaningful stories and emotional beats for the audience to connect with, you're bound to slow down a little bit, right? There isn't gonna be as much punchy, punchy fight fighting as there is in other Marvel movies. And right next to Eternals is everything everywhere all at once. You guys already know how I feel about that. I'm not gonna blow that movie any harder than I have to. The Fablemans, gas, gas. Uh, Gone Girl, The Goonies, like, come on, um, uh, amazing. Gar the, between the two Guardians, which ones do you guys prefer? I prefer the first one. Uh, the second one got a little goofy. Got a little goofy in the end. Though I will say, the stuff with, with Ego, the Living Planet, uh, Chris Pratt's, or not Chris Pratt, Star-Lord's father. That, that was pretty interesting. Uh, my most recent purchase right here, Infinity Pool, that came out this morning. Uh, interesting film to release on Valentine's Day, considering it's about a guy that essentially throws his marriage down the garbage can just to live uh, with these crazy people. Great film. Brandon Cronenberg knocked it out of the park again. If you haven't seen that or Possessor, 100% recommend it. 
Interstellar, banger. They are releasing this uh, near me again, I believe, mid-September this year uh, in, in the IMAX State Museum Theater near me. And I am definitely going to see it, you bet your ass. Joker, coming out of the original screen of that movie, I thought it was very, very overrated. I thought it was a really good character study, but it's also just a jumbled mess of Taxi Driver, King of Comedy, a lot of Scorsese films just told through the lens of the Joker. Uh, this is one of my favorite trilogies that we have. I mean, you have three top to bottom, just absolute bangers. I keep calling them bangers as if they're songs, but man, these movies are awesome. Jordan Peele is a treasure. Uh, if you guys are looking for an interesting alien life an alien in life. If you guys are looking for like an interesting alien film, uh, kind of in the vein of Ridley Scott's Alien, Life is terrific. This came out, okay, can this go away please? Life came out all the way back in 2017 and it stars Jake Gyllenhaal, Rebecca Ferguson, Ryan Reynolds, and it is, it is very interesting. It goes a certain direction that you don't expect it to go and I absolutely love it for that. Daniel Espinoza, he did, he did Morbius, didn't he? Oh, he did. Oh no. Now let's keep going. I bought this the other day as well, Edge of Tomorrow, aka Live, Die, Repeat. <laughs> Dude, I would, they, they can never settle on a title even to this day. I mean, both titles are dope, Live, Die, Repeat, Edge of Tomorrow, they're both just badass. But uh, Tom Cruise, Emily Blunt, Brennan Gleeson, Bill Paxton, rest in peace. Uh, if you if you haven't seen this movie, it's one of the greatest action thrillers, I would say, of the past decade. I lost my place here, I gotta find it. Okay, here it is. Uh, Justice League, the original one. Take a piss on that. Wipe your ass with it. Do whatever you have to do. Just don't watch it. <laughs> Logan, absolute banger, dude. I, I, I remember taking my mom to see this movie. And if you know anything about my mom, it's that if there's anything big that's going to happen in it, especially when it comes to, like, a death, she needs to know about it beforehand so she can mentally prepare throughout the day for it. Like, I remember, spoiler alert, if you still haven't seen The Force Awakens yet, when Han Solo died... Uh, it was the day of the premiere, and, and I hadn't seen it yet, but she, she asked me, uh, does Han Solo die? And, I, you know, I, I, of course, had to look it up for her just to make sure, because I wasn't that big on Star Wars as my dad was at the time. And I told her, and she was still a mess in the theater. That that was a hard death to watch. Uh, Martyrs, if you, if you want to be disgusted for a solid, uh, what, 100 minutes... Right up your alley. Perfect. Best superhero movie. Well, not the best superhero movie. The best Superman movie of all time. If you disagree, that's okay. Let me know why you disagree down there. I just think Man of Steel has some of the best character work when it comes to the Man of Steel himself. Don't don't tell anyone I bought this, guys. Please. Please don't tell anyone I bought this. It was on sale for $10, dude, and I got all three of the movies. Who cares if Morbius is in there? Also, I'm sure Morbius is going to be so much fun to, like, in 10, 15 years, just go back and re revisit on a night where you just drink a couple of beers, maybe eat a gummy or two, and you're just watching Michael Morbius on screen for an hour and a half. We're going to keep going here. Nomadland. Uh, this is the movie that got Chloe Zhao the gig of... Eternals, so if anyone hates Eternals, well, this is the movie that you have to thank for it. Uh, it did win Best Picture, it won Best Director, it won a lot of awards that year, and I do think it rightfully deserves them. That movie is amazing. Parasite? Y'all already know what Parasite is. James Dean Rebel Without a Cause. If you haven't seen a James Dean film and you're a film fan, do yourself the beautiful service of watching a James Dean film. He truly was gone way too soon, and Nicholas Ray directing as well, man. It's a shame. If you guys are ever considering going down the rabbit hole that is drug usage, watch this movie and you will never want to do that ever again. Scream from 1966, the original film, is one of my favorite horror comedies of all time. If you haven't seen it, it is really good. Uh, Smile as well was a delightful surprise from last year. I did not expect it to be as good as it was. Is it like... I don't know. Is it Rosemary's Baby? Is it is it, is it a horror classic like that? No, of course not. Is it It Follows? No. But it's it's pretty satisfying. It's a pretty entertaining watch. Uh, and then, of course, we got, you know, all of our Spider-Man films here. Like, what are we doing without them? The Amazing Spider-Man, you already saw it at the top. I wish the Spider-Mans were all together, but it does make sense. Amazing Spider-Man, and then these are just called Spider-Man. It does, it does make sense for it to be alphabetically like this. And then we have our Star Wars movies. I do like The Force Awakens. I was a fan of The Last Jedi besides the whole Canto Bite thing. Still don't understand how anyone in the history of anything thought that that was a good idea 
Oh, wait, it was Ryan Johnson who thought it was a good idea, who wrote Glass Onion. If you guys didn't know, I'm not a big fan of Glass Onion. I think it is one of the laziest, laziest whodunits of all time. I mean, by the time we're at the halfway point of the movie, we already know who it is, and we're just seeing backstory of it all happen. At least in the first Knives Out, which was written by the same guy, Ryan Johnson, we were on our toes until the very end. Even if the reveal was one of the most famous actors of that current time, it was still not as predictable. I will proclaim it to the day I die that Super 8 is one of the movies that got me into filmmaking because guys, before all the film bros out there start commenting, what about eight and a half? What about what about all these all these old classic Criterion films? I was born in 2002, okay? And when you are what, nine years old at the time of going to see this film, seeing this on the big screen in IMAX was life-changing. Seeing J.J. Abrams direct the piss out of this movie, dude. And the cast is just, it's perfect as well. Like, if you haven't seen Super 8, do yourself the pleasure of doing it. Absolutely love that movie. There will be blood, of course. Terminator Genesis, we will never talk about that one ever again. But at least they didn't shoot John Connor in the beginning of the movie. Titan, amazing. Tar, amazing. Unbreakable is probably my favorite M. Night Shyamalan movie. I think the twist in this movie is an absolute killer one. Uh, besides The Sixth Sense and The Village, this is probably his best twist. Um, Shyamalan's very hit or miss. Underwater... This movie has a 48% on Rotten Tomatoes, and it's actually pretty entertaining to watch. It's it's very, very fun. Is it stupid? Oh my gosh, yes. Does the ending just go off the rails, balls to the wall, stupid in the end? Oh, you bet. But man, is Kristen Stewart entertaining to run from this Loch Ness monster. It's so funny. Waves is an A24 film. Is this a Barry? No, this is a Trey Edward Schultz film. I thought it was a Barry Jenkins film for a second. I, I, I do apologize. But this is the first film that I saw Kelvin Harris and Taylor Russell in. And oh my lord, are they amazing. Kelvin Harrison has this film coming out later this year where he plays a uh, violinist, I believe, uh, in, during like the Revolutionary War. I, I could be wrong uh, about the time period it's set in. But he looks phenomenal in that movie. And... I'm, I'm, I'm going to be there just to see him again. Taylor Russell, she's in Bones and All. Phenomenal, phenomenal talent. She's really good at being subtle, like at, at showing emotions very subtly, if you know what I mean. Sterling K. Brown is on the opposite of that. He can show emotions on a big grandiose level, and it's amazing. Uh, of, and, of course, Alexa Demi, who plays Maddie in Euphoria, is in that movie as well. Very, very good. And this is the end of the list, guys. So we got West Side Story, Whiplash... Uh, Wizard of Oz, no offense to my White House Down fans, it, it is entertaining, but it's not worth stopping and talking about, even though I just stopped and talked about it. One of my favorite zombie movies of all time, World War Z, <laughs> the, the opening sequence, uh, Downtown, is so entertaining, and it's genuinely terrifying, especially when that uh, guy gets bit, and Jerry, I believe, is Brad Pitt's main character's name, when, when his daughter drops her, like, little toy... Uh, Brad Pitt goes and grabs it, and it makes a noise, and it starts counting down really creepily from 10 all the way down to 0. And while it's counting down, we're seeing this guy turn in 10 seconds. It's terrifying. And then when he's done turning, he immediately starts attacking another car. It's such good stuff. X, if, if you guys don't like X, that's totally okay. It was one of my favorites of last year. Uh, now, these X movies we can kind of forget about, except for this one. Days of Future Past is really, really solid. I do really like X-Men Days of Future Past. And we're going to end on Yesterday. Really, really good uh, comedy film from 2019. That was a nice little surprise. Uh, the trailer was very, very intriguing at the time that it released. But, you know, it really could have been hit or miss. And I think it hit pretty hard. But that is my entire digital collection, you guys. What is in your collection? Feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments below. And let's talk all about the movies that we love and the movies that we own. Now, of course, I do have TV shows on here. But there's just not really any point in showing you those. I have The Walking Dead and I have Euphoria on there. Those are literally it. But, yeah, that's my entire digital collection. Thank you guys so, so, so much for watching. This has been a bit of a longer video. So I'm definitely going to have to edit down a lot of it. But yeah, I'll see you guys this Thursday for Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Take it easy, guys. See you then. Peace.